Blog Talk Radio. What time is it? WH Radio. Joining me now, I got the man who doesn't need a Jerry, and you can teach that. How you doing? I got Tom with me. What's going on, Tom? What's going on, Oscar? How you doing tonight? You like, how you doing? <laughs> how you doing? Anyway, how you doing? <laughs> you got to release your inner Enzo. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> Anyways, um, tonight on Wrestling Heads Radio, we're going to be talking about some PWG, which the show is on tomorrow night over here in the West Coast. Or You know, me and Skits will be over there tomorrow. And also, not only me and Skits will be at PWG, Saturday night, me and Skits will also be at the Lucha Underground um tapings in Boiler Heights, California. We will be there as well. Um, it will be Skits' first time checking out uh, Lucha Underground. Um, the, the funny part was that uh, I remember during the week, uh, getting ready to laugh, people, that he was he was all like, damn, I'm going to be the only black guy there. I'm like, no, 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 come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> I know it's Lucha Underground. Uh, that's funny. You probably thought about the Hispanics there, but no, no, no. Trust me, there was a... a, a, a you can say a family of black people there, so you, you, you're cool, dude. You're cool, dude. <laughs> so uh, I guess you expect you some like triple A thing or something like that. <laughs> nah, it's nothing like that. But um, Skits, I'm sure Skits gonna enjoy that show. But anyways, and also we're gonna be talking about some Ring of Honor, New Japan, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, let's start off with some PWG, shall we? Um, uh, tomorrow night, like we like I said earlier, it's PWG. It does not have a title name for some reason. Uh, I don't know what the fuck. You should, they should have called it P- PWG uh, Wrestling Heads or something like that. <laughs> that would be freaking sweet. <laughs> yeah. Um, they, they really, they really should name it PWG Ebola. God, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. Like Daniel Bryan, no. No, we don't want no Ebola in the West Coast. No, no. <laughs> but that's no, like the no. perfect name for their after Ebola show. It's Ebola. <laughs> Jesus uh, Christ. Yeah. Um, yeah. Apologize if people are listening to Texas and Nebraska or Georgia where you're uh, getting all these Ebola stuff from. But um, anyways, um, tomorrow night, VWG, let's go to this card, shall we? Um, Brian Cage, well, we had our show on Tuesday, we'll be going against the uh, debuting Uha Nation. Um, I'm going to give our, let's give our little predictions out of this whole card. Um, I'm, I didn't change my mind on Tuesday. I'm still going to stick with it. I'm still sticking with Brian Cage to, to go over this match. I said Brian Cage, too. I still think he's going to win, but it should be a, a hell of a debut for Uha Nation. I'm sure I'm sure that the Reseda crowd is going gonna, is gonna to love Uha Nation. So it should be a hard-hitting match, and, you know, they're going to get their shit in. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, it's going to be an awesome debut for him. I, I believe Brian Cage is a perfect... Opponent for him to have a debut match with, um, and it'll be I'll be honored. To, you can say I don't want to say honored. Oh, I can say honored. So fuck it. Um, I'll be happy to you know get to see him and wrestle in person. Uh, and I'm glad to get to see him because he's never in the West Coast that much. And uh, it'll be it'll be very exciting tomorrow night <laughs> to witness Uha Nation for the first time. 
And, um, yeah. New Hot Nation, baby. Hope he comes back. We'll see how he does. Let's see how the crowd um, reacts to him. Uh, yeah, let's see what happens with New Hot Nation. And I hope we'll get to meet him tomorrow. Uh, we got a singles match. You got Cedric Alexander going against Bobby Fish. Um, I think the other day I was scared to discussing this. I think I was going for Bobby Fish. But you know what? I'm going to change my mind. I'm going with Cedric Alexander on this one here. Yeah, I, I was thinking maybe Bobby Fish would be getting upset victory. You know, um, he lost to uh, TJP in his first match at uh, the first night of Bola. So I thought maybe this would be his first chance to get a win, but I think Cedric will pick up the win. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think Cedric actually needs this win more than anything. Uh, that's, it, I don't want to say uh, PWG is taking the book from Ring of Honor, but I, I think they think they have big plans for um, Cedric down the road for an NPWG as well, even though it's like red. I was very, you, you, you can see it's red hot in Ring of Honor, but Fire PWG wants to do something for him down the road. So I think it's time for Cedric to, um, yeah, in PWG, which he's been having phenomenal matches in PWG. Um, I don't know if you've seen Bola in his matches, uh, or I don't know if you noticed, but his match has been very, um, you can say he's been very, very good in PWG in these last couple of shows. I don't know if you agree with me, but that's that's how I feel when I'm watching them in person. It, it's been great, like almost like match of the night type matches. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you realize that, Don, if you watch those la- last couple of PWG shows. Yeah, um, I haven't gotten the chance to check out BOLA. That's probably going to be for tonight and the rest of the weekend. Um, even though to have match of the night, on any three nights of BOLA will probably be tough to do because, you know, I already know some of the matches that are probably going to be match of the night already. And yeah. I've heard good reviews about some of the matches, so it's kind of hard to do. Um, but going back to, you know, PWG 11, I mean, you still have to give match of the night to the uh, Guerrilla Warfare match for the tag team titles. I mean, that match was just insane. You know, I mean, r- right now, without watching Bola, that was my PWG match of the year. But probably that might change when I see Bola. It depends. But, you know, Cedric, Cedric can go in there and have some good matches, uh, PWG and Ring of Honor. Um I don't know if he's getting as big of a push in PWG as, you know, Ring of Honor. It seems kind of like ACH was getting a little bit of a bigger push than Cedric. And then, you know, a guy like Trevor Lee, of course, picked up a victory against Cedric on a, on night one. So, um, I don't know. We'll see what they have planned for Cedric down the road. Yeah, definitely. Um, Shout out, shout out, Cedric Alexander. Been the past guest in the show. I got to po- post an uh, old episode we did on YouTube. Hope I do it pretty soon when we had him and uh, Caprice Coldman uh, back then. All right. Um, next match Biff Busick going against Tommaso Ciampa. Uh, I want to say Bu- Busick, but, you know, I think Ciampa is going to go over on this on this match. Uh I, I think Ciampa needs another win in, in his in his uh, you can see his little tender in PWG. I, I, I if it, to me if if Busick wins this match, what what does it mean? You know, for Biff Busick, you know, I, I you know, it, to me it's like you, you know it's a head scratcher if Busick wins this match, but but I'm gonna give it to Ciampa. I think he needs it more than Busick, but yeah, I'm going for Ciampa. I don't know about you, man. Yeah, I mean, it, in some sense, I mean, what would be the sense in having Tommaso Ciampa win? I mean, I've heard I've heard he had a competitive match against Elgin. Um, 
on night one of the Battle of Los Angeles this year. But other than that, he hasn't been doing much in PWG. So what would be the point in, in giving him the victory over a new guy like this music who could have, you know, a run going down the road? Um, but in my prediction, this one's tough. This one's tough for me. Um, I don't know. I think I'm going to go Biff Busick. I'm going to go Biff Busick on this one. All right. All right. We'll see what happens uh, tomorrow night. Um, and by the way, ladies and gentlemen, um, while we're giving our predictions for PWG, you guys can always join the conversation at 760-454-1107 or tweet us at Wrestling Heads and give us your opinion about tomorrow night's PWG anytime during the show. Um, yeah. Yeah, just anytime you can interrupt us. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see what happens tomorrow night in Biff Busey against Tommaso Ciampa and also... Y'all listening, you guys could check, uh, follow us at Wrestling Head. We will give you the coverage, and uh, we'll tell you what's going on while we're inside the receiving that building. Um, yeah, just just follow us. We'll give you our results, and I'm sure Tom will be staying up late, looking at our Twitter account, seeing what's going on, and if there's any surprises, we will give it to you. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll be following him along late, probably yeah. into the wee hours in the morning. But, you know, yep. it's Friday night, so it'll be fine. Yeah, definitely. Um, we got a tag match going on here. You got the African American Wolves, which is, that will be AR Fox and ACH going against the Young and uh, I try I try to imitate um, Nick Jackson there. I don't know if I did it right, but <laughs> um, yeah, they're gonna have uh, this is gonna be a, I think it's gonna be a great match. Uh, but I am gonna go with the Young Bucks on this one. Yeah, I'm gonna go Young Bucks too. Uh, should be a hell of a match though. Probably gonna be tons of crazy spots, and of course, you know, Air Fox coming back after an injury, so he was going to come back and, you know, be A.R. Fox and, you know, try and kill himself because he's that insane. So it should be a good match, though. So I know that's going to get the crowd uh, popping all night. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, it's funny that Mercury or or um, Rich Warren is not booking the show. Wouldn't it be funny those guys come out with the, oh, I'm not long. Oh my! <laughs> Freaking Lionel Richie's theme, uh, music and shit. I, really funny to come out and just imitate him. I, I'll be laughing my uh, my tail off, but fuck it. <laughs> Let's see what happens. And, and it'll it'll make that crowd chant all night long. <laughs> um, let's see what happens, man. Uh, next match you got Adam Cole, baby. Come in. Trevor Lee. This one, I had to really think about it, but I'm going with Trevor Lee on this one. Adam Cole, single matches losing streak is going to continue on. So um, I'm going Trevor Lee on this one. Yeah, this was another one that was kind of hard to pick because obviously they see big things in Trevor Lee, and they're going to give him a big push within, I think, the next year. You know, they're already starting to do it. You know, he's gotten victories over Michael Elgin, Kevin Steen. Um, So it's going to be interesting to see, you know, what happens with him. But it also is interesting to see what they're going to be doing with Adam Cole, you know, former PWG champion. Um. You know, are they going to keep him as a singles guy? Are they going to keep him in the main event picture? It's going to be interesting. But I'm going to take Trevor Lee in this one, too. Um, Yeah. I still still say within the next year, I said, I actually said this when we were doing our bowl predictions way back when, that 
within a year from BOLA that Trevor Lee would either get a shot at the PWG World Championship or be PWG World Champion. So, obviously, they see a lot of potential in the guy. Guy is, you know, I think he's the youngest person on their roster right now. And, you know, he's made a big splash this year, made a big impact. So... I think they're just going to keep that on the upswing, but it should be it should be a good matchup between these two. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, uh, and the whole Trevor Lee thing, I mean, the PWG champ by Bola. I don't know about that, but I can actually see him winning Bola next year to get a title shot. I can actually see that happening. Um, Adam Cole, yeah. one thing to mention, you know, remember like was it a week ago or two? There's talk that he could be going to WWE right after his Ring of Honor contract comes out. Um, I could see, I could see him, I could see WWE try to get at him. Um, if if he was a free agent right now, I don't see WWE going after him due to all these uh, cuts and um, and what we saw with really Mac. I don't see them signing anybody anytime soon. But who knows by when, when, whenever it's Cole's Ring of Honor contract comes out, I could see them um, trying to trying to get him and hope he signs for a contract. And we probably see Adam Cole in NXT next year <laughs> and uh, going against guys like Hideo Tommy, Finn Baylor, and um, who knows uh, who else who knows going to be in the roster at the time. Who knows if Adrian Neville or Sammy Singh will be in the roster? But uh, yeah. We'll yeah. see him in that show. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens with Adam Cole. I think it's interesting that, you know, obviously he's on WWE's radar. You know, there there's a ton of people, not even just wrestling fans, but people within the wrestling industry that just see Adam Cole as the next big thing in the WWE. You know, the guy is, what, 24, 25 years old. Yeah. Still incredibly young and already has done so much on the independent scene. Um, so I think it's only up from uh, up from here for him. Um, obviously, he has a ton of charisma. He kind of fits that WWE style. Maybe not his uh, you know his body type. He's still he's you know he's on the small side, and that's not you know it's just Adam Cole or anything. It's just you know compared to what the WWE normally would look at, which is obviously changing. Everybody just sees Adam Cole as a big-time star. Eventually, he's going to eventually end up in the WWE. I think it's a matter of when. Um, Who knows? Maybe he just sticks on the independent scene for a little while and sees what happens. But anyway, it's all Adam Cole's got it because, like I said, he's one of the best on the independent scene going, and we know he's going to do big things. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, but I don't call Trevor Lee's gonna kill out there tomorrow night, so can't wait to see that. And uh, hopefully, Trevor Lee's gonna fly over my head again. <laughs> All right. Yeah, he probably will. Oh fuck! <laughs> For the PWG World Tag Team Championship, you got the world cutest tag team, which is Candice LeRae and Joey Ryan, will be defending the tag team titles against Johnny Gargano and uh, Chuck Taylor. Uh, this one's, like, pretty easy, but I'm going for the world tag team. And funny is that I saw a picture from Candice LeRae, I think it was either on Instagram or on Twitter, that it, she said that, Johnny, you can have her heart, but you cannot have her tag team titles. <laughs> Um, yeah. It's gonna be a f- yeah. It it this is, uh, I, I'm I, I, I know uh, I know Mr. Skits is probably a little disappointed in that. Yeah. Yeah, he took like fucking five different pictures with Candace LeRae. God damn it. <laughs> but um. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I'm gonna go with World Cutest Tag Team too. Um. I do like the matchup, though. It's it's kind of something different, even though we've seen the world's cutest tag team versus the best friends before. But just yeah. adding in Johnny Gargano in there after he faced uh, Candice LeRae one-on-one at BOLA, 
that should be interesting to see. Um, but once again, should still be a solid matchup. All right, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be an awesome match. It probably be some kind of um, easy comedic accents in this match. Um, uh, I know it's, I might actually I might actually expect the crowd to boo at Johnny Gargano. <laughs> I don't know what I'm at because they love Candice at, at Reseda. They they really love her, and um, that crowd's smart, like really really smart. They they should boo Johnny Gargano. <laughs> um, I'm sure there's a lot of people know that you know they're they're dating and all this stuff, and and you know it'd be funny if Johnny Gargano gets booed. I mean, I will laugh my ass off if I ever see the crowd boo the shit out Johnny Gargano. And, um, yeah, <laughs> let's see what happens. Uh, so Chuck Taylor, you know how he is. He's going to do his thing. Um, you know, he's going to be out there making me laugh, like always. He always. And I'm sure he makes you laugh, not only PWG and Chicago as well. Um, yeah, Chuck Taylor is going to be doing his thing. And Joey, he, you know, Joey might get booed. Uh, at the last PWG show, they were booing the shit out of him. They don't like him out there. Uh, it's like a John Cena effect out there with Joey Ryan. Um you know, it's, I'm not saying, let's go, Joey, Joey. Like, no, 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 they hate Joey. <laughs> it's like Chicago, when John Cena in Chicago. Now, you don't see people cheering for John <laughs> Cena in Chicago. <laughs> that's, that's, what I'm, that, that's what I'm saying about uh, Joey Ryan in the Reseda building. So, yeah. All right. Uh, the main event is going to be for the PWG World Championship. The champion, Kyle O'Reilly, going against Roderick motherfucking Strong, who looked at my crotch a lot at Bolo weekend. Um, if you watched that it match with him and AJ Styles, he, um, I'm going with Kyle O'Reilly on this one. Yeah, I'm going to go with Kyle O'Reilly, too. I think he's going to retain. Uh, should be... A hell of a matchup, though. Um, obviously, they're building Roderick Strong as a legit heel, which I kind of like to see because it just seems like besides the Young Bucks and Adam Cole, there weren't any true bad guys in PWG. Um, but it's good to see kind of Roderick Strong just playing this super dick, you know, asshole <laughs> heel. So it's good to see that, and... You know, these guys are going to, you know, go out there and keep the hell out of each other. Rod, Roddy is going to bring the backbreakers. Uh, O'Reilly is going to bring the submission. So it should be, I think it should be a good match. I'm actually looking forward to this more than the last PWG World title match, which was at PWG 11, which was Kyle O'Reilly versus Chris Hero. I just feel that. Uh, Kyle and Roddy kind of match up better than Kyle and uh, Chris Hero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, you know what? I'm gonna put this out there in prediction. Kishay will appear tomorrow night because he's gonna be a Lucha Underground on Saturday night. So why not come to LA a day earlier and then? You know, he, he said on, 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 on after he won the bowl, he still gets a title shot. So when there's the next PWG show after this one, I'm sure Kyle Riley is going to go against Ricochet. And, um, yeah, I, I expect him to appear and maybe, I don't know, talk to um, uh, Kyle Riley. You know, I say if Kyle wins, he's going to see him after that title or something like that. So... Like be ready or something like that. I could see him doing that. I don't know about you, but I could see Ricochet doing that. Yeah, that, uh, that could happen. I don't know how likely it is that's going to happen. It could be just kind of, kind of fantasy booking a little bit. But yeah, you never know. You never know what's going to happen. You never know what's going to go down in Rasuda. Anything can happen. But. My question to you is, obviously, Ricochet is going to get a shot at Kyle O'Reilly somewhere down the line. Who knows if it's going to be at the next event or if it's going to be at DDT. Who knows when? But when Ricochet, if he's Kyle O'Reilly's next challenger, 
do you think he beats O'Reilly for the title? Uh, I want to say, actually, you know what? You know what? I'm going to say no for right now. Reason being is that I don't know how this contract is with Lucha Underground. Um, I'm hearing things like that Ricochet's contract with Lucha Underground is almost like he's exclusive there. It's like nearly that way. You notice that he'd been booked out of um, all these other shows he was doing. He got booked out of that match with Okada. And um, it's almost like he is, like, exclusive to them. You know, it's like he's almost – I'm not saying – it's almost like a WWE-type contract he signed with Lucha Underground. Maybe that's why this whole uh, Dragon Gate Evolve title rumor thing is going around about that, that, you know, they're going to end this Dragon Gate USA thing and – or they're going to, you know, unite the titles, all that stuff. Maybe it's because the whole Ricochet and – the gender ground thing and Ricochet's, um, you know, future with, um, I want to say the World Wrestling Network. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's like, I want to say not looking too bright, but he's he's probably not going to be doing any shows with them anymore. You know, like, you won't see him any balls or any other shows. Um, yeah, that's that's what my reason is saying. That's, that's what you can see my, that's my reason yeah. for, um, Say Kyle will will go over if they ever go at it. Either the next PWG show or DDT four. Um, yeah. Or let's, I, the next I show feel, is DDT four. You know, I, I can see your I can see your point, but for some reason, and I you know I've said this before, I just feel like PWG is something different. You know, like even though he might have an exclusive contract with Lucha Underground, at least he's still in the California area. Yeah. So, say the war, the PWG show coming up, it's not like he has to travel very far to get to Lucha Underground, you know, the next day if he has to. I'm thinking that could be a reason why, you know, he had to pull out of the match with Okada was because, I mean, that match is going down this weekend, and then we have the Lucha Underground tapings going down this weekend. And, you know, yeah. that means Ricochet would have had to fly over to England, have the match, fly back to the States, and he would have been, you know, especially when you travel overseas. I've never done it personally, but what I've heard is you get really bad jack lag. You know, it takes a while for it to kind of, you know, go away, so they probably didn't want that. Um, And if if it is true that maybe he won't be in PWG anymore because of the Luge Underground, then that's such a waste to... With Ebola, I mean, hopefully it's not true. Hopefully it's just kind of you know whatever. But I guess we'll have to see. We'll have to see what happens down the road. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We gotta we have to wait and see. <laughs> um, my question to you, Tom, is you asked me a question about Ricochet. My question to you: Will a match that we did not expect? Or not booking this card, like like you said, have an extra match. Will, will we see an extra match tomorrow night? Yeah, I don't think so. No. Huh? I mean, so I mean, I I only watch the DVDs, so I'm not there live to see how how long do the shows typically go there? Three hours. Uh, yeah, yeah, like something like that, like three hours. Yeah, so you know, with an extra match, I don't, I don't know if you would need one. I mean, right now, how many matches are there total? There's one, two, three, seven. four, five, seven matches. I think that's the, I think that's you know a good amount of matches. I don't know what else they could put on there. I'm not really too sure what else they uh, could put on there. But yeah, yeah. Um, if anything, if they were if they were gonna do some like put the price match for us, if anything, hopefully, it has involved Willie Mac. <laughs> Imagine Willie Mac having a match tomorrow night, right after his release with the WWE, and then it had a special goodbye from and everything. 
which he's not is never going to make them on DVD or they're not going to probably put it on YouTube. But um, yeah, just imagine all that crowd will go nuts for Willie Mac, and whoever he wrestles, he, Willie Mac has to go over. I don't care who it is. But um, yeah, I, I mean, yeah. it wouldn't be surprising. I mean, this was kind of another person, but. The day after Cole Cabana got released from his WWE contract, he appeared in PWG. So yeah. you never know. Yeah, yeah. So um, it'll it'll be nice to see Willie Mack and um, tomorrow night if he does. But I'm I'm not sure if he booked another show somewhere else. But if anything, if he comes to a PWG tomorrow night, that'd be freaking awesome. Um, yeah. So um. We'll see what happens tomorrow night. And um, is there anything you want to predict, like something crazy might happen that you want to share, Tom? Yeah, I don't. I don't think anything too crazy is going to happen tomorrow night. I think it's just going to kind of be a little uh, a standard show. You know, usually after Bola, you need to kind of just cool down and kind of just have a, you know, still a really solid show, but. You don't want any, anything too crazy to happen. Just kind of keep building on storylines, keep building guys up, uh, keep building champions up, and then probably either November or December, maybe All Star Weekend or something else happens. Just to just to kind of build up toward the end of the year. So I don't expect anything too nuts to happen, but with PWG, you never know. You never know. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens tomorrow night on PWG. Um, but right now, we're gonna let's take a commercial break. Like I said, a quick one, and then we're gonna be talking about some other shows going around. Um, I like to share uh, this weekend coming up. Um, yeah, we'll be right back. Four Quarters Radio is the home for the best professional wrestling and independent wrestling. Discussions and coverage. Billy, Ant, Martin, and Sam bring you three of the best podcasts every week. The Four Corners Raw Roundtable, The Indie Project, and The Saturday Freestyle. Along with the podcast, FourCornersWrestling.com is designed with all wrestling fans in mind. Future articles, videos, the weekly shows, and much more. Four Corners and Wrestling Heads are teaming up to bring you wrestling's next revolution. Are you ready? Yes, I am ready. I'm sure Tom is ready. Um, yeah, I know the the Ring of Honor tickets went on sale last week for La- the Las Vegas show. Um, hopefully, me and Skits get them this weekend because we want to go out there. But um, before I talk about other shows that's coming out this weekend, uh, I want to discuss something that it was brought in uh, earlier today, like in the reports, but. Um, WWE is planning to have a NXT takeover at, or you could say over around the area for um, the same area for WrestleMania in, in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, maybe possibly be an access, but uh, they're planning to do a takeover show over there. Um, Tom, what you think that like the they should do a takeover in uh, in the Bay Area? Um, I don't know. You know to do. To do, you know, like a uh, a, a pay per view on the WWE Network. Um, I'm not so sure, sure yeah, so sure they should do that. Maybe they could do that, but to maybe have kind of like an NXT live event, maybe you know the day before WrestleMania, kind of just have exclusive NXT stars. Um, I'm not sure where they would do it, but somewhere. Um, I think that would be awesome, you know, for anybody going to WrestleMania because, you know, obviously you want to see the people on the main roster, but if you get to see NXT too, obviously a lot of the people that go to WrestleMania are, um, aren't are usually kids. They're kind of in that older adult demographic, so they know a lot of the guys on NXT and they love them, so it'll just add more ticket sales and more money to WWE. And I think WWE, like, needs to realize how, like, important and vital NXT is to them right now. You know, there are so many people 
aren't liking what's on the main roster product, but they look at the WWE Network and they watch NXT and they say, you know, that's worth nine ninety nine a month, and that's how much they love it. You know, I don't know how much Vince McMahon realizes it. He probably doesn't even care about NXT. You know, that's Triple H's little baby, but I think, you know, just the more you can expose NXT, the better it is, you know, get their names out there, bring some more up-and-coming people in, you know, just kind of keep that whole uh, rotation going. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Um to me, this is what this is what's gonna happen to me. And I was gonna ask you, say they don't yeah. do like an NXT special, like they don't do something on the WWE Network, but they have they bring in all the NXT guys, um, and say Finn Balor, Hideo Itami, Kevin Steen, um, are still in NXT at that time. You know, there's reports that they're not gonna be in NXT for too long, but just hypothetically speaking, if they're still in NXT and they do kind of like a special little NXT access, wouldn't you pay money to go get their autographs and see them wrestle if they're going to wrestle? Um, to be honest with you, I will go see Adeo and um, Finn Bay, like, like take pictures with them. I already met Kevin Steen and um, yeah, it's just like, whatever. But um, if Adeo and Finn, yeah, I'll do it. But um, this is me because I'm planning to go to WrestleMania weekend, and I want to check all these other shows besides WWE. Um, to me, if they do a a a, a, um, a takeover show out there, most likely it's gonna be a Thursday night. So, and he, and, he, and if Evolve or a Ring of Honor, well, Ring of Honor seems like they're gonna do the same thing they did last year when they were in New Orleans. They have a show on Friday night, like a special ice cream review show, and then Saturday is gonna be a TV taping. So, this is what this is what I'm probably end up doing if they, if if NXT does a show like a takeover. Thursday night I'll go to a takeover show. I will I'll go over there like just to check out guys like Finn Balor and David Tommy for the first time, and um. And I probably have to get Ring of Honor to, be, to tell you the truth because I'm planning to go to the Las Vegas show in, in the beginning of the month, of that month. So I will probably will say, all right, I already checked Ring of Honor out. Never, I never checked Evolve or any of or any other stuff. So I might have to, like, Thursday night go to NXT, Friday night check out Evolve or Dragon Gate because I'm thinking, I'm, I'm thinking they're going to do the same thing like they did last year. I had three shows in a row. I'm going to do the same thing. So, so it looks like Thursday night NXT, Friday night Evolve, Saturday possibly Hall of Fame. Depends who they uh, who they put in. Like if they put in like the NWO, I'm going for sure. Or Randy Savage, I'm going for sure. Um, Sting, hell yeah, I got to go for him for sure. Um, I'll probably go to the Hall of Fame. Then Sunday, of course, WrestleMania. That's probably how my schedule looks because uh, you know. Uh, that's 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 how I look. Uh, if, if you guys think I'm crazy or or anything, uh, yeah, go screw yourself. <laughs> um, I don't know. You gave me time. Like if if I was in the Ring of Honor show a month earlier, and and, and you know, and if you're in my shoes, never been to an NXT show, you know, would you do that? Um. Yeah. You know, honestly, you know, if I was going for WrestleMania weekend, um, obviously I would want to see, you know, depending on ticket prices for the Hall of Fame and who's going in, I'd want to see the Hall of Fame. Um, I'd want to see Ring of Honor. The only thing that I would be kind of skeptical about is Dragon Gate and Evolve, especially what happened this year with them. I mean, they didn't really have as great of shows as, you know, they were kind of hyping it up to be. There was a lot of a lot of strange booking decisions that went on there. So I, I would kind of be weary about that. But, and, you know, but that's just, that's also me, just because I've seen Dragon Gate USA slash of all um, once before when it was down in New York City um, last year. I saw it one time. But even then... If I could see it again, it just it would also depend on what card they would also be producing. 
you know, and hopefully they just wouldn't, you know, try to try to bullshit the fans kind of like they like they did earlier this year. Yeah. Well, and I told Sue Young I'll be there. <laughs> but um, yeah, but if you were my shoes and never been to any of these kind of shows, you know, um, you know, I probably would just choose Evolve. You know, I probably would not even go to any Ring of Honor to say the truth if if, that, if they do a, a next uh, takeover. Um, I don't know about yeah, Skid. I, I mean, but the thing is, I know because you've never seen Dragon Gate USA and Evolve or Ring of Honor, but you're going to see them earlier in the month. With Ring of Honor, you're almost kind of guaranteed a good show, no matter how many times you go. And no matter what show you go to, you're probably going to see something different. You're going to see different matches, and it's going to be kind of a better produced show than Dragon Gate and Evolve. You know, that's not taking credit away from them. They can put on um, good cards and good shows when they need to be, but they're kind of back and forth. You know, some shows would be good, some shows would be bad, so you don't want to go in there thinking, oh, well, is this going to be a a badly booked show? Is there going to be, you know, some interference or whatever? So it's, you know, I can see where you're coming from, but in my case, I would, you know, kind of pick Ring of Honor over uh, Dragon Gate USA and Evolve just kind of at this point, you know. Yeah, yeah, I feel you on that. Um, yeah, yeah, I know, I know what you're talking about. Like, I, like, because look, before this whole NXT thing was brought up, I was all like, I said to myself, okay, Thursday, I'm going to freaking um, evolve. Friday, Ring of Honor. Saturday, Hall of Fame. Sunday, WrestleMania. Now that this shit came up, I was like, the fuck? <laughs> you know? Um, see, now it's like, damn it, I never, I always want to go to an NXT show, you know? Bad coin, I'll go to fucking Florida, check out one of these damn fucking um, uh, takeover shows, for sure. And that crowd's kind of, you know, it's a good-ass crowd there. <laughs> I would like to be part of that crowd there. Uh, but now... This talks about having to come in rest. I mean, we got like shit. So this is one of these shows I have to fucking not. Uh, I have to like say, all right, I ain't going to this show. But I agree with you, Tom. Um, a freaking Ring of Honor show. It's it's like more likely I'm enjoy that show than the Dragon Gate Evolve show. Um, yeah, I I, I see what you're saying there, but. Who knows? Maybe I could talk to Skits about it. Cause Skits, yeah. Skits I think, you know, to it, it's funny because we're talking about all this and, you know, WrestleMania weekend isn't for, you know, another, you know, six months, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there's plenty of time to see what's going to happen between here and there. So, like we always say, just got to wait and see. That's the motto. That should be the motto of this wrestling. Just wait and see. Yeah, definitely. We're going to have to wait and see what happens. And, um, yeah, we'll see what happens in the next few months in, um, at WrestleMania weekend. And, yeah, I'm sure we're going to be discussing this down the road. Um, but anyways, uh, Tom, you said you got some, uh, Ring of Honor stuff you want to bring up, right? Yeah. Uh, well, there's a couple things. Of course, Ring of Honor officially announced this week that they will be returning to regular pay-per-view for Final Battle, which is December 7th, at Terminal 5 in New York City, which I'm planning to be there. So, obviously, I won't buy it on pay-per-view, but I will be there in person. A new venue for Final Battle, usually they're going to be at the Hammerstein Ballroom, but they moved to a bigger a bigger venue for Final Battle, which it's going to be interesting to see, but still going to be an electric crowd. So it's going to be twenty four ninety five for uh, the pay-per-view cost if you're planning on buying it on pay-per-view. And I just think everybody should. You know, it's going to be... Final Battle is always a good show. You know, it's usually their biggest show of the year, their last show of the year. So they always try to do big things at the end of the year. So just hopefully people is uh, people are going to buy the show and keep up uh, 
with Ring of Honor doing some good stuff this year because obviously they're back on pay per view because uh Best in the World did some uh pretty good numbers uh pay per view buy rate wise. So hopefully it keeps it up. Should be a great show. Obviously they announced some people that are gonna be there. Jay Briscoe, Jay Lethal, Adam Cole. No AJ Styles yet, which is interesting to see if he'll show up there or if they're going to announce it later. We'll see if AJ shows up, but uh, Matt Seidel should be there, which I'm looking forward to. Um, I haven't, I don't think I've ever seen Matt Seidel live. Um, I never saw him in WWE live, and I never saw him anywhere else. So it should be interesting to see him live. I'm looking forward to it. Also, uh, Ring, of, Ring of Honor announced some matches for some shows before Final Battle. Glory by Honor in San Antonio, Texas. The main event has been announced. It's going to be Jay Briscoe defending his Ring of Honor world title against ACH. Uh, what do you think about that one? When you said that, I was thinking skits, because skits love ACH. Um, <laughs> um, I know skits would be wanting ACH to walk out with that world title. Um, to be honest with you, I think I'd rather have ACH be a world champ than Jay Lee. I mean, sorry, I'll call Jay Lee, Jay Briscoe. Um, I mean, come on. You, listen, I, I like ACH. He's a great guy, great up-and-comer, but there's no way he would be a better champion than Jay Briscoe right now. I mean, the thing with Michael Elgin that people commented on is, yeah, Michael Elgin's great in the ring, but he lacks so much charisma. But when you have a guy like Jay Briscoe, who isn't as good in the ring as Michael Elgin, and he's still really solid in the ring, but Jay Briscoe's charisma and his promos just put him over the top. That's what makes him a good world champion. And who knows, you know, now that AJ Styles is an IWGP World Heavyweight Champion anymore, maybe now it's kind of a way just to go from Jay Briscoe to AJ Styles. Yeah, definitely. Um, I know Mr. Matthew Grant will kill you because he doesn't want AJ Styles to become the Ring of Honor World Champion because he hates that guy. Um, (laughs) um, Yeah, I just don't. I don't know, his whole career whole career with Jay Briscoe, I never seen him as a freaking world title star. Even when we had the first run, I'm like scratching my head on that one. And now he's the champ again, I'm all like uh, I understand why they're doing it, but yeah. Jay's gonna go over ACH no matter what. And hopefully Well yeah, you know, with, with all these leaks on AJ like I said, what what Ring of Honor does and what what I like, what they do is they create all these different interesting matchups. You know, they have on some of the shows like Jay Briscoe versus ACH, and that gives people a reason like, oh, shit, I'm not going to see that match maybe anywhere else, so I'm going to go to that show and see that. Or I'm going to, you know, purchase the video on demand, and I'm going to watch that. Yeah, all right. Yeah, because I would like to see a Jay Briscoe AC Styles match. I kind of want AJ Styles to be the champ. The Ring of Honor, and it looks like it will happen now. The whole New Japan thing could be going away. We could see more in Ring of Honor, and um, who knows? We'll see what happens. Um, but like I said, it's oh, hold on. This is taking place in San, San Antonio, right? What is that? This is taking place in San Antonio, right? I believe so. I could be mistaken. I could be getting them switched up. Let me double check. Yeah, because if it's San Antonio, I understand why, because that's actually ACH's um, home state where he's from. You know, he is from Texas. Yes, it is. All right, see? That, that's ACH's um, home state in Texas. So, I mean, maybe ACH will have a good crowd because people know he's from Texas. So, um, unfortunately, he ain't going to walk out with that title. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. But and anyways. another match that Ring of Honor announced uh, the week before at Survival of the Fittest in Toledo, Ohio, 
first time ever, it's going to be the Briscoes taking on the Addiction. So that should be a hell of a matchup. You know, Ring of Honor, I I, kind of said it, I think uh, a couple weeks ago, maybe a month ago, Ring of Honor kind of had a okay summer. You know, it wasn't, nothing really kind of stood out except for best in the world, but other their their other events, even, you know, Field of Honor, which I was considering going to, uh, people didn't think it was that good of an event. And they were telling me that, you know, it was good that I didn't go. They said uh, it kind of would have been a waste of money. I don't know about that one, but um, so they had an okay summer, but I feel like they're kind of kicking up steam again uh, toward the end of the year. Of course, also extravagant to six where they just had last month um, was a great event. And, you know, this month they've had like uh, Bennett's bachelor party, which was something different. Um, so I think Ring of Honor is on the upswing toward the end of the year. they got a lot of interesting stuff going on. Yeah, yeah, it is. Ring of Honor is doing some great stuff. Um, Final Battle and Pay-Per-View, can't wait for that, in December. Um, hopefully uh, Skits doesn't work that day. I can go over his house and watch it. <laughs> um, but, yeah, Final Battle is going to be some crazy um it's some crazy good stuff. Um, I, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a great match. Some, they probably don't have a like a full card plan yet, but they, they're gonna figure something out. And I know it's gonna be a great match, a good show. Um, we'll see what happens, man. Um, I want to discuss this show coming up in San Diego, but uh, unfortunately, I just got the news right now that that show got canceled because this show had I don't know the right card. It had some TNA guys in there, like. Uh, those those were supposed to be his, um, if I'm not mistaken, a triple thread match between Johnny Gargano going against TJ Perkins and Tigre Uno uh, in this show. And Ken Shamrock's actually appearing in this show. Yes, Ken Shamrock. And um, I was going to want to discuss it, but I just found out that the news got canceled. This show's going on Saturday, too, in San Diego. So, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> But speaking about Saturday, me and Skits are going to Lucha Underground. I recommend all you guys, like I said in the show plenty of times, you guys should check it out. It's it's going to be great um, when it comes on El Rey Network, um, uh, October 29th. Uh, you guys got to check that out. It seems like every show I go to got better and better. And um, Tom, call Comcast, say what the fuck. And you will like you will want to check out that uh ring announcer. She is hot. You will like her. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh you gotta check it out. Um yeah, you don't wanna miss that ring announcer, Tom. I'm I'm telling you, Tom. You don't wanna miss <laughs> miss her out, dude. <laughs> yeah. Even even if I can't find it on uh on my television, I'm sure it'll be online. So I think either way I'll be able to catch her. Yeah, there's actually an episode that uh, Danny, uh, what's his name, Danny Trio, uh, Machete, he actually uh, was in the crowd. Um, you probably see him in two episodes. Um, if you ever watch it, so um, there was a spot that at Battle Royal, uh, Ricochet, aka Prince Pumba, I forgot what he did, but he ended up going outside of the ring and he got in front of. Um, Danny Trejo, and it was like, he was like, oh, shit. And then he shook his hand, like, you know, and just to himself, like, you know. <laughs> it was a funny spot. Uh, you, you, you'll you see it in, in the next few weeks. Um, that's not in the first episode. That's going to be, like, way down. Um, so, yeah. And, oh, yeah, speaking about the first episode of the Jenny you most likely will see me on TV. I was sitting by the entranceway, so most likely you'll see me um, on, that, on that show, the first episode. So um, check it out. You'll see me like you'll see me for ninety ninety nine at SummerSlam two thousand fourteen. Or we could see you in uh, PWG. Oh yeah, plenty of times. I know, right? I know, like, I know. I've seen you and Skits on there plenty. Yeah, you probably see me going to to the restroom too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know and uh, usually, and usually I can spot Skits. I I actually saw 
him uh, for the previews for uh, Bola. He was standing up a couple of times when I saw him. Yeah. So, of you course, know what? You, know, you, know, you, know, you know skits being skits. I have a question. You, you've seen Eleven, right? Yes. Okay, do you see me hanging on the bar area on Eleven? Because I, I, I haven't seen Eleven yet, and I was at the show, but do you see me in the bar area, like, standing, standing watching that match? Um, I'd have to I'd have to go back and honestly uh, watch it again. Um, I can't remember seeing you yeah, there. If you, yeah, because I was sitting by the bar area. Right, 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 it's like right next to the entrance where, where, where they come out, right? The entranceway. So I was just I was standing right next to the entranceway, and I was watching that, that whole match with Kyle O'Reilly and Chris Hero. I was standing up watching that match. So um. Yeah, I just want to make sure if I was, like, mostly even showing just standing there, you know? Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's another uh, way you can see me in PWG. <laughs> Watch, so, yeah, guys, tune in uh, uh El Rey Network for Lucha Underground. Um, I'm sure Skit's going to enjoy that show, uh, Saturday night. And... Um, it's gonna be fun. Who knows who's gonna be there? Because last time I heard, I supposedly Ray Mysterio was backstage. Um, I'm sure he wants out of his WWE contract to go to Lucha Underground. Um, but we'll see what happens. Uh, but he might be backstage again. But San Diego is not really far from uh, um, LA. Probably like an hour and a half drive. Um, yeah. So he he might end up being at that show. So we'll see what happens. I'm sure Conan will be there, and um, it's going to be a great show. And uh, see what happens. Um, also, Tom, you have some new Japan stuff you want to discuss, right? I did. I did. So New Japan is starting to announce a couple shows that they got coming up in a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. The first one I'll get to is the Super Junior Tag Tournament. It's going to be four nights. Uh, the first round is going to be October 25th, and then the semifinals are going to be November 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. And right now, here are the teams and the matchups. We got Juice and Thunder Liger teaming up with Tiger Mask, the fourth. They're going to be taking on the Young Bucks. We got Fuego yeah. and Ryusuke Taguchi taking on El Desperado and Taichi. We got the Time Splitters taking on the Forever Hooligans. And we got Bushi and Mascara Dorada taking on Red Dragon. Damn. So that's going to be the Super Junior Tag Tournament. That's going to be interesting to see. Of course, New Japan always has great junior stuff, whether it's the Super Junior Tournament or the Tag Tournament. Always good stuff from them. It's going to be interesting. Um, I'm going to be looking forward to seeing both things. But what do you think about Red Dragon getting in this tournament and uh, coming back to uh, New, Japan, uh, New Japan? Sorry about that. I, I, maybe a lot of... New Japan fans might want to kill me for this, but I kind of want Red Dragon to win this whole thing now. <laughs> um, I'm actually going to see him tomorrow, both Kyle and Bobby Fish. And I am actually going to wear uh, this Red Dragon shirt that my uncle bought me for my birthday, so I'm going to wear that over there at Reseda. Um But uh, I'll, I'll talk to him about this match, like what, about them going to New Japan. But... It's very exciting. I was I was happy to see him at uh, at um at the at the finals of um just that other show just recently. Um, yeah, we're at the final day of the G1 climax. The G1 climax, yeah, the finals of G1 climax, yeah. And uh, when they had that match with the uh, time splitters, that was a freaking awesome match. I enjoyed it, and um, yeah, it, it was great to see him out there, and um. Yeah, I'm happy to see him come back. I mean, Red Dragon is one of the best tag teams in the world today. Um, some say there's Young Bucks, there's Red Dragon. You know, it's yeah, that who's the best tag team today going. Um, but Red Dragon is in there somewhere with the Young Bucks. So, um, 
yeah, they they deserve, actually they deserve to be in this spot in uh, in New Japan, you know, and uh, I'm yeah. happy for them to be there, and hopefully they'll continue on appearing there um, in in New Japan, and I'm sure Kyle and Bobby are happy to be part of it, you know. Yeah, it's definitely good to see them over there. Adds another um, tag uh, junior tag team over there. So I'm liking this relationship between Ring of Honor and New Japan. Should be awesome to see them doing their thing. Yeah, definitely. Um, do you have a favorite team that might the, the win the whole thing? Um, I'm thinking uh, the Time Splitters could take it. Um, you know, they are the. Uh, New Japan uh, Junior Tag Team Champions right now. So, obviously, they have to be the favorites. Um, you know, I would also look out for Fuego and uh, Ryusuke Taguchi. Um, if they can get past, they could be dangerous. So, um, I think either one of those two. But, you know, I don't see Jushin Liger and Tiger Mask the fourth winning it. I think they're just kind of a little bit past their time. I think they're just there to get guys over. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, we were talking about like having um, bringing ROH down to New Japan. Do you see any New Japan talent heading back to Ring of Honor for a future show, like example, Final Battle? Um, maybe. Um, I don't know. I don't know about final battle. Um, maybe. Like I said, I I would think with something like that, Ring of Honor would announce it. Um, maybe they will within the next uh, coming weeks. But yeah, I I I think it's harder to get uh, New Japan talent over here than it is to get Ring of Honor talent over there. Um, okay, what, what about, like, say, um, in Vegas, when you go to Vegas, which, will that be more possible? It could be. That could be more of a possibility, you know. I might be lucky. Um, I might be lucky, I might be lucky, because you never know. I might end up seeing Okada or, or Nakamura coming back to Ring of Honor for that one show, or Tanahashi. I'd be like, damn, I'm a lucky motherfucker. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. Could, it sure could happen. Yeah. You know, I think Ring of Honor and New Japan right now have a good uh, good working relationship. So I think at any time, um, some Japanese talent can return back to the States. So I wouldn't rule it out at any time. All right, all right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cross my fingers hoping that March it will be a crazy month for me and I'm end up seeing one of these guys like Tanahashi Nakamura in person, you know. Um yeah, because not all of us have the money to go all the way to Japan to see these guys. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, hey, World of the Worlds was in your city, New York City, so you could have gone there. <laughs> um, yeah, I, but, I, I was hoping to go there, but uh, tickets for that sold out pretty quick, and I couldn't, couldn't get tickets to there, plus I was eventually... Um, having to end up working that weekend anyway. But, I, you know, I did get to catch it, of course, on my pay-per-view, and I had a couple of friends who went there and who uh, sent pictures to me and all that. They said it was crazy, you know, especially seeing the New Japan talent live, you know, because these are guys that, you know, they're not just, you know... Um, American talent that they've never seen before, or even, you know, like Canadian or North American talent. This is talent that's all the way over in Japan and they've only seen through iPay-Per-View. So they said it was crazy to see those guys here in America. But hopefully, you know, like we said, Ring of Honor and New Japan can keep up this relationship and we can see some of these guys uh, back in the States. Yeah, definitely. All right, um, let's take one more commercial break, and uh, it will be another short one. I've been seeing short ones lately, but yeah, we'll be right back. This is Ring of Honor superstar Nigel McGuinness, and you are listening to Wrestling Heads Radio Show. So stay tuned, you wankers. 
Yeah, you wankers. Welcome back. Um, I was going to say, you know, hey, Tom, I just, uh, this morning I was listening to the to the uh, Talk is Jericho podcast, and um, Chris Jericho mentioned about Justin Roberts being on, on the show tomorrow, and and, um, and he didn't mention that he got released, but there was no mention saying this was recorded before it was released. So I'm, I'm guessing... This was uh he did actually record this um right after the release. So I think that's gonna be something interesting to listen to what um Justin Roberts had to say after his release, you know? Yeah, you know, I I wasn't sure about that whole thing. Um it's gonna be interesting to see, you know, what happens yeah. from that. Even even if it's not from after his release, um, it should still be an interesting um podcast to listen to just because it's kind of like an indication of maybe what things to come. But, you know, Justin Roberts is just, you know, he was a big, you know, wrestling fan in general. So I, I'm sure it'll be a fun conversation between those two. And, you know, you don't get to see Justin Roberts being interviewed. And this is a guy that's been with WWE for years. So he probably has a lot of stories he could tell and a bunch of things that he's going to talk about with Jericho. Yeah, you know it's funny. Uh, earlier today, I read that JBL denied that that him that sorry that that Justin and um, and Michael Cole was uh, were arguing or something like that. And it's funny that when JBL mentioned that we don't have time to like tweet or none of that stuff while we're, while we're working, you know. And when he when he typed when he mentioned it, I was like saying to myself. Is that the reason why maybe the argument happened? Because if you notice, Justin likes to take pictures and all that during when Raw is on, uh, while, while yeah. Raw is going on. So I don't know if that bugs, that kind of bug Michael Cole or, or anything or something like that. Because I understand their point, like they're commentators and they, they they can't really mess around on the phone. They don't have time for that, you know. I'm sure that their focus is yeah. their work. Yeah. I actually have JBO's message uh, right up here. I'll read it real quick. He All posted right. on his Facebook, I saw on the internet that Michael Cole and Justin Roberts got into a fight at ringside during a live Raw. Do you realize how preposterous this is? Michael has zero break during the three hours. King and I barely have enough to tweet. We go straight into the WWE app during commercials in parentheses, which my goal is so helpful in showing everyone how to download, in parentheses, and back to TV action. This, quote-unquote, fight never happened and couldn't have happened due to the lack of time. I have no idea how these things start, but happy that people care enough to write about what we do and what goes on, sometimes though the news is wrong, as in this case. I wish Justin the best, obviously, and I know nothing of his departure other than what was announced, but wanted to clear this up as the internet was buying this for fact for some reason. Okay. And then, and then, and then JBL went on. This is what I actually found interesting as well. I mean, it's just an opinion, but he said, I do think that Magel is the best play-by-play guy WWE has ever had. And before all you hop on the JR or Gorilla bandwagon, I mean, no insult to either of those guys, both all-time greats. I have worked with Michael since my broadcast start, and I have never seen anyone better. That is obviously subject to my opinion. The stuff he has to do with all the social media, app, network, et cetera, makes his job the hardest play-by-play in the world, in my opinion. And as much as I love getting him on air, I think he is great at it. All right. All right. Cool. But uh, let me ask you a question. Do you buy JBL always mentioned about, like, oh, he, he's denying that all this stuff happened? Um, I mean, I can see it. I mean, I can see from his point Um you know, that Michael Cole doesn't have time to argue during this. And, you know, people also forget that, you know, Justin Roberts, besides, you know, being the announcer, he's also timing out the shows as well. He's 
you know, feeding lines to Gorilla position, which is filling out lines to the production truck. So, you know, while Justin Roberts is taking pictures during, you know, when he's back at his little uh, his little chair over by the announce booth, um, you know, we, we don't know the whole details. We don't know if this fight really did happen or if it didn't happen, you know. I don't know if we can go on fan reports or if we can believe JBL. Um, so I'm not... I'm not too sure. It, it's just you kind of don't know who to believe, but maybe I guess JBL would be a better source than fans. But I don't know if, you know, he put it up there just because he was supposed to or if that was just him posting it. Who do you, yeah. who do you believe? Do, do you believe that Justin Roberts did get into a fight with Michael Cole or do you think that was fans kind of making stuff up. I, I believe a fight did happen. I, something had to happen that caused this release. I don't think do the budget cut they released him because like I said, this guy was their best announcer and 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 you don't just get rid of him because of do the budget cuts. If anything it was because of the budget cuts they would have got rid of either Lillian or uh Cody Rose's wife Eden or maybe even a Jojo. Um, I don't know. I I just don't believe. I don't buy it at all. I mean, it, or unless some uh, something we don't know about, like if Justin Rose is a drug addict. Okay, I figure. I I, I understand. Um, but if there was an argument going on, I actually do believe it happened. Um, I because what 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 JBL mentioned about tweets, and we don't have time for tweets and stuff. And they see Justin do it. Maybe it annoyed them. Like, hey, get your ass to work. The fuck, you? like they probably seen him. Hey, what? You know, that's you know, we don't see us tweet. We don't see us take pictures and anything like that. During we're all working, you know, it's like we're working here. We're not fucking around, you know. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm assuming maybe that's why Michael Cole said something to him, and he probably put them off right there. And you know, um, that's how Justin likes to do. He likes to tweet during when shows are going on, you know, I think pay-per-views, you know, I want to see also even live events. He likes to take pictures and and stuff. So, yeah, I I, I actually believe that there was an argument going on maybe because of all that. I don't know. It's uh, definitely an interesting uh, scenario that's happened within the last couple of days. It's insane. Yeah, I'm actually hearing that Eden will replace them. Uh, they're gonna try Eden, which is I believe that's the right move because I want to trust Lillian in a live show because she botches a lot, and now that she's yeah, on I mean, Smack, but Lillian, but Lillian was announcing Raw for years, so she has that experience. It's either gonna be him, uh, him, her, or Tony Schimmel. So it's I don't see anybody but those two unless they decide to bring back Howard Finkel for a little bit, which I don't know if they're gonna do that. You know, the guy is pretty yeah. old, so Yeah, the thing with Shimmel, I don't think he doesn't ring announce that much I used to anymore. I think he mostly does live events. Um but T V Yeah I don't think he does, does it anymore. He does SmackDown too, doesn't he? Or does Lillian no. do SmackDown? Lillian does SmackDown. Which um, is perfect for her. Which is perfect for her because, you know, I, I don't know how much time she been botchy, but ever since she did came back to the WWE, she botched a couple times. You know, you remember she was gone for a bit and then she came back and they, they just put on SmackDown because she been botching yeah. a lot. So yeah. what if we did? But see, yeah, that's my concern. Just, yeah. It's most likely when we see Raw, it's gonna be willing. Or I think it's. I mean. I think it's I think it's just going to be Lily Garcia announcing, just because she's kind of the next step. I think she'll do um, Raw, and then maybe Tony Schimmel will get some more time. Maybe he'll do SmackDown. Um, but, but what about Eden? But I don't know. What about Eden? She's way too inexperienced. Way, way too inexperienced. Not she and she's not familiar with the main roster audience. People are going to be like, "Who is this 
check. At least with Lillian Garcia or Tony Schimmel, most people know who those two are. Even little kids, I think, know who those two are. And yeah. I don't I don't really like Eden that much. I don't think she was that good. And so I wouldn't even want to see her announcing Raw. I will see. I I just I just fear that Lillian might might screw it up. Watch her call Dean Ambrose to Seth Rollins. No. <laughs> yeah. Because... I mean, th- there's never a time... Even, you know, Howard Finkel used to mess up all the time. I mean, it just happens, and especially when you're alive and you have to remember so much stuff. Um, you know, your brain probably gets scrambled, so... I'm, I'm sure, you know, Lillian could do, I think, a, a fine job. You know, a couple of botches I don't think would hurt her. doesn't really matter. But, you know, guess we'll have to see Monday what the WWE decides to do. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll see what happens, bro. I mean, uh, hopefully... Um... We will see that, and I just saw a mouse walking by. <laughs> um, but anyways, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, hopefully, they have a great future in 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 the in the WWE. I mean, I mean, I to be honest with you, I didn't, I don't. Um, uh, what was I gonna say I don't. I really don't really pay attention to eating that much. Uh, maybe a little bit in the NXT, but. Um, Oh, don't don't forget too, Byron Saxon. He could be another guy could, that could just put any um in. So um, don't think about Byron Saxon now. You know, maybe. Um, I think they're just kind of gonna keep him down, uh, commentating in NXT. Yeah, they should do. Um, yeah, they should do. Uh, we'll see what happens, bro. I mean. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm. You can say I'm a little disappointed by Justin Roberts' uh, departure. Justin Roberts was badass. I mean, I like Justin Roberts to be honest, with you, but we'll see what kind of future he has. Um, if it comes wrestling or outside, outside the the wrestling world, it could be um, um, it could be uh, uh, see what happens, man. Um. He could be doing boxing, like I said. I think I think I said on Wrestle Chat that he should try boxing. Um, but um, yeah, see what happens. Uh, all right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, we're gonna end the show a little early today. And um, don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, just uh, follow us on Twitter and see um, and see uh, and see um, uh. uh or you can or check out our what's it called it our, our results from PWG tomorrow night and uh, see what happens and we'll sh- we'll give our results or, or we'll put up some surprises you never know what happens so um, I think it's time to give us put our plugs in uh, you can follow me at sinister six thirty two Instagram Twitter and Vine and um, and uh, I'm trying to see if I can do my classic match of the week party tomorrow I mean this week. Uh, it's been kind of rough for me to do it, especially with having spent too much time with my dad and sister. And uh, I'll, I'll get back to that. Uh, and follow Wrestling Heads. You know what? Follow us on Instagram. You might take some pictures of PWG. So follow us on Instagram, uh, Wrestling Heads, and um, and on Twitter. So if you want results for PWG, uh, go ahead, Tom. Give all your plugs. Uh, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at to tweet me. Give me a follow. I'll be sure to follow you back. Also, of course, I give out some uh, some props to everyone in WrestlingHeads.com, all the writers. Of course, Mr. ROH Code, a.k.a. our buddy Chris. He's always writing about different things, a lot of international stuff he writes about. Very knowledgeable guy. He knows his stuff better than anyone, better than I think anybody I've I've seen ever. He knows his Japanese wrestling. He knows it all. Uh, make sure to give him a follow. That's 
at ROH Code. And, of course, check out all the blogs over there, uh, tons of good writers, um, people that I'm still even just to this day checking out because there's so much material on there. I mean, you'll be you'll be on WrestlingHeads.com for a couple of days. You might miss work. Uh, you might not contact anybody in your family. You might just become, you know, socially outcasted because you're on WrestlingHeads.com so much. But be sure to check it out. Uh, ProWrestlingTees.com slash WrestlingHeads, too. Of course, a couple of those awesome shirts that I see you and Skip always rocking, and I'll be getting it, and I'll be too sweeting on Twitter so you guys can see me. But uh, also, I'd like to give out a, one final shout-out to the Weekly Wrestling Podcast and our boy, Matthew Grant. They're going to be in Chicago making their U.S. debut this weekend, so make sure to follow them at Weekly W Podcast. bunch of cool guys over there. They actually just did an interview tonight with the Juicy Product. JT Dunn and David Starr, so be sure to follow them, check that out, and uh, yeah, make sure you check out all those things, and if you don't, then you know what? Fuck you, suck a dick. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You know what, speaking about those guys in the Weekly Wrestling Podcast, um, if they do come down to DC4, your ass got to be here too. It's going to be a freaking party <laughs> if you guys do come down here. So, um, yeah. I'll say, yeah. Save yeah. your money. And it also depends what Save tag teams are going to be there. You know? Save your money. You might see the juicy product there. You might, see, you, you're pretty sure you see the young bucks there for sure. Um, super kicking Massey Grant all the time, and uh, <laughs> super kicking Skits all the time. So um, until next week, we'll we'll be back. Um, yeah, just look at our Twitters and movie we'll stream. We'll, we'll, we'll probably be on Monday or Tuesday. We'll see what happens. But just follow us on Twitter. We'll see the next time we'll be back. And, um, yeah, until next week, we be out. Peace. Peace.